Hello, my name is Philip Cameron. I'm so glad you joined with me today and my darling daughter, Melody, who is with us. And we're going to have a great time with you sharing some thoughts about who Jesus is, the revelation of who Jesus is and some great updates regarding our mission work in Moldova. I'm so glad you've taken the time to watch this program and I hope it's a blessing to your life. Welcome to Daily Faith. Welcome. We are so glad you could join us and we are going to be talking today about the world and its opinion of who Jesus is. There's lots of influences in the world today. I've never seen, I've been in America for 50 years and I've never seen in my life such a confusion as to who we are as a nation, who we are as a church. But I'm so glad today that standing above all of this confusion... There is a name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus. And I believe that God is going to help the church as we seek his face. He will hear from heaven. He will heal our land. And I believe that we are going to see a mighty awakening, a mighty outpouring of the Holy Ghost in this country. So I am just so excited to be with you. My daughter, Melody, welcome today, Mel. Hey. Tell me what we're going to be doing at the end of the show, or towards the end of the program. We're talking about Moldova, we're talking about containers, we're talking about furniture, we're talking about Christmas, Christmas. we're talking about all kinds of fun things. <laughs> we have a tremendous mission work in Moldova that we know you want to be a part of. We take young men and women who are being literally cast out of an orphanage. They call them orphanage, orphan graduates. And with no future and no hope, they're put on the streets. And they come to us and we teach them about Jesus and we turn their li lives around. And we have seen what the name of Jesus can do in someone's life. The Bible tells us that the, 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 the disciples are with Jesus and they're coming into the region of Caesarea, Philippi, and Jesus asks what seems to be an off-handed question. And as they're walking along, he says, and this is in Matthew 16, he says, uh, verse 13, he asks his disciples, who, who do men say that I am, the Son of Man is? And immediately this opens up a can of worms showing you where the disciples' heads are all at at this time. So they said, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. In other words, the influence of people around them had made them think of Jesus in their mindsets, how they saw Jesus. A lot of people see Jesus through a different prism than you and I do. But until we know who Jesus himself is and what he can do in our lives, it is to no avail. And so Jesus says, but who do you say that you are? Yeah, sorry, J Jesus said to them, but who do you say that I am? And the most unlikely character of all the disciples, the man who rushes in where angels fear to tread, has a revelation, has a glimpse for a moment. Now understand, I'm going to share with you in a few moments Something that will amaze you. Jesus had, had raised the dead and healed the sick and did all these amazing miracles with these men right beside him, multiplying loaves and fishes. But he could not tell them why he was here on earth until they had the revelation of who he was as a, as, in, his, in his identity. Now listen to this. Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock that I will build my church, and the gates of hell, or Hades, shall not prevail against it. Now, he wasn't saying that he's going to build this church on Peter. He was saying, I'm going to build my church on the revelation that you have just received. Because Peter, and a few minutes later, is called Satan. Peter denies Jesus before the cock crows. So all of those things tell us that this was not, Peter was not who Jesus was building the church on. The Roman Catholic Church believes that, but I don't. I believe that the, the, the church of Jesus is built on the revelation 
of who Jesus is, and that was the revelation that Peter received when Jesus asked him, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And uh, so listen, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. So all of this miracles he's doing, they don't know who he is. They know he's healing the sick. And they know he's raising the dead. They've never heard a man talk like this man. But they didn't understand who he really was until Peter had the revelation from God that this was the Christ, the son of the living God. Up to this point, he was not identified as a son of God. And, he, and, and, and after he'd done this, he said to his disciples, please tell no one what I've just told you. But listen to the real key of this story. The Bible says, 20, verse 21, From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go up to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and raised on the third day. Jesus could not trust his disciples with his death and resurrection until he understood that he was the Christ, the Son of the living God. You are only able to receive from God according to the revelation you have of him. Today in the modern church, we have made God in our own image instead of us being in his image. Isn't that the truth? We've made a God that we think and we have conceived what God is like. And I've got news for you. The God that most of us serve is nothing at all like the God who really is. He's bigger than you think he is. He's more powerful than you realize he is. And Peter, with this revelation, allowed Jesus to share what was going to happen next. I've got six grandkids I love with all of my heart. Melody has two boys. One is called Blair and one is called Wesley. Wesley's the weeest one of our family right now. He is a character like you have never seen the like in your life. He's got the most delicious hair. I could eat him, honest to goodness. But he is the muckiest kid I've ever seen as well. His face looks dirty just after he's come out of a bath. He, he, he just attracts glup on his face. I've never seen anything like it. My wife, he'll stay with us and my wife will bath him, bathe him. He'll come through. And, and into our living room and, and to get his pajamas put on. And before Chrissy gets up from the bath to the pajamas, his face is a mess. I love that little boy. Oh, I can't describe how much I love him. But our relationship as granddad and son and grandson is limited not by how much I know of him, but by how much he knows of me. God knows all about you, but he is limited. He can't, he can't, I, I, I couldn't say to Wesley, Wesley, I love you so much. Here's the keys of my pickup truck. Go drive it. Because I know that he doesn't have the understanding of what a pickup truck is and how to drive. He'd kill himself. And God is only able to give to you and your world and the, the, the world you live in himself in accordance to how much we allow him to grow and, and our understanding of him. So to some people, when, when they look at God, they see God as a, a, a small, meager God. Like you're looking at God through a straw. And that's the God they serve. And that's the God they respond to. And that's, the God that, that's their, com their communication. But God is bigger and greater than what we think we are. Or what we think he is. So when the disciples came back and they said, well, some think you're, you're Jeremiah and some think you're Elijah and some think you're John the Baptist. They were, they were telling Jesus that people didn't know who he was and neither did they until the revelation of who Jesus really is. So I pray for you today that in your circumstance, whatever you face, that you'll understand that God is bigger than your concept of him. That he's bigger than your circumstance. That he's bigger than your sickness. And he's waiting to reveal himself by the power of the Holy Spirit into your circumstance. And I pray for you right now. That you will have a revelation of who Jesus really is. 
Not a religious idea. Not a denominational idea. But a divine revelation. You'll never move on what you think you know. You only can stand on what you know from experience. And Jesus wants to come into your life. If you've never asked him into your life to be your savior, he's not a historical figure. He's not someone who was born on Christmas Day and died on Easter and rose on the third day. He is the Christ, the Son of God. He's the Savior of the world. And He wants to be your Savior as well. And I pray for you that you will know Jesus, not just in a historical way or someone else's opinion, but you can stand up like Peter and say, you are the Christ the Son of the living God. In Jesus' name, amen. Watch this. Full House. It's time for household salvation. We'll help you see your unsaved loved ones in a totally different light. God has given Philip insight into God's promise of household salvation. Do you know that you have a covenant throughout Scripture that promises that your family are part of your eternal inheritance? Philip's family was bound in alcoholism for over 200 years. And through the miraculous story as told in Full House, Jesus saved the Camerons. And in the span of six weeks, 67 of the Cameron family were saved. This book will change your life. Order Full House today and believe with Philip to see what God will do in your family. To order, please visit www.philipdcameron.com or call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or contact us by mail. Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. You really need this book, I'm telling you. You talk about knowing who Jesus was. My mom got saved. And for seven years, she prayed for my dad's salvation. And he literally tried to break her mind and spirit. Would force her to go to the dance halls and the bars. And if she wouldn't participate, he would beat her in front of his buddies. A tough soldier just come back from um, service. And my mother, somehow, I don't know how she did it, but somehow she caught a revelation that God had a, a plan for Simon Cameron, my dad. And after seven years of praying, the revelation that she had broke through the darkness that was holding my dad. It's all in this book. It's called Full House. You need to get this book. It's the story of redemption of our family. And I believe that tied up in our story, you are going to see the possibility and the revelation of your family getting saved as well. I know you want it. You can call right now, 833-324-5932. And just say, I would like a copy of Philip's book, and we'll get it to you right away. We love you so much. Watch this video with Christmas. And that is just a wee taste of what happens in Moldova. That's in one of Vatra houses, unfinished, apart from the table that we took in for that particular thing. And we got some of the kids together and we had a Christmas. What we do every year, we send a Christmas container. Now this year we're sending over 
five more containers than normal because we're going to furnish those homes. We have six houses in a village called Vatra Village, and we are believing God to furnish these homes, and you can be a part of it. Those young folk that you saw, every one of them was an orphan, came from horrendous circumstances. And in fact, I'm smiling, I'm watching that video. Um, Victor, one the, 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 the chap, the, the kid that was carrying the box and had earphones on and had this smiley orange and, and, and um, banana, he is now a married man. And several of the kids that are in that video are now married. And um, in fact, Andre and his wife, Almira, both kids from an orphanage that met at our homes and came and said to me, Dad, we like each other. Is it okay if we consider dating or courting? And I said, well, yeah, I guess. And as long as you stay in the group. And they are now married and having a baby in November, I think it is. Is it November? Yeah, in November. And so it's crazy to watch these kids that came from total hopelessness. Andre, the young man I'm talking about that, that, that's getting, having a baby, his mom died when he was five years of age and spent his whole life being just kicked around, just never had a dad, didn't know his dad in the first place, and his mother was killed in a car crash. I'm the only father he's ever known. And um, to watch him grow and marry this lovely girl called Almira, and now she's having a baby in November. And uh, so the exciting thing is that they are now our house parents in one of our homes for the boys, and they are literally, their house is completely full. They can't take any more kids. And we have requests, as I talked to you just now, for 13 more girls and 10 more boys. We can't take them in until we get Vatra Village finished. And you can be a part of that. So explain how people can help us with these Christmas containers and the containers with furniture for Vatra Village. Um, well, there's a couple ways that you can help. Um, the old the old-fashioned way is you can call us up and say, I'd like to give a gift, but we kind of like to make things a little bit more fun. And for us moms and wives and ladies who like to do a little bit of shopping. Not me. <laughs> yeah. I hate shopping Leave it to with us. a holy we'll, passion. We'll take care of it, you right? See, to a man, shopping is like an army maneuver. You know where you're going, you get uh -huh. it, you get it, and you buy it, and you get the heck out of there as fast as you can. Well, for moms, we have been working in the house all day, and sometimes we like a little jaunt out. <laughs> what better reason to get out of the house than to purchase items for young girls who don't have a bed of their own? That's true. And that's what we've made possible. Um, we've set up registries uh, at Target and Walmart, which you can find pretty much anywhere in the country. You can go into the store and shop for the things that we've no, chosen. Is there a computer in the store? You can, you can log on to the computer in the store? Yes, you can do it on your phone. If you're a little bit more gadgety, you can put the apps on your phone and you can find us on there and you can hold it um, in your phone and it'll tell you what aisle to find. The, Are you that serious? Is. Yeah, yeah, so you can have it right there in your hand. You don't have to print papers and all that kind of stuff. That can get, but so you can, literally, is there an app? What app? Where, where do you get the, the app from? The Target app and the Walmart app. Yep, and right in your phone. They type in the registry orphan's hands? Yes. Or and you can go to um, our website, registry.philipdcameron.com, and you can shop from your living room, your kitchen table. Oh, that's more like my kind of yeah. thing. <laughs> and the items will be sent directly to us. If you do the shopping in the store, you have to ship it to us. Um, but if you do it online, they online take, handle that. Online is the way to go. I'm yeah. telling you, online is But that way, way you can go on and see what we've chosen. Each room is different. You know, we try and make things... We don't want everything to be the same, so we try and do a couple, you know, there's let, a couple. Let me say this to you. This is important. These homes are absolutely gorgeous. They're as nice they as really my homes. They are beautiful. This houses, this village of six houses is 108 yards from the largest lake in the whole country of Moldova. It was built primarily for rich folks. All the ceilings are fancy and stuff. And um, there, was, there was a lot of algae in the lake, and the government poisoned the lake killed to kill the algae and killed the fish and killed everything. And people couldn't swim in the place. It was, it was horrendous. And this village of houses, it went broke. And it sat for nine years, never been, never been lived in, about 80% finished. And we bought them, and the Lord helped us pay them off, and we were two to finish, and then, um, then we'll have them all open. And uh, so it's, it's a real miracle. So these kids are living, are, the, these orphans are going to be staying in some of the nicest houses in the whole country. And I just, I love that, the fact that God loves the orphans so much 
that he will give them the wealth of the wicked laid up for the righteous. It's just amazing. And, but we need your help in these containers. Now, these containers cost about $9,000 each. And what happens is they come to our warehouse in Montgomery. Our forklift puts the pallets on the back of the, on the, back of the container. You seal it with a lid, seal it, and they, they, they mm -hmm. close it. And it, it, it goes on a tortuous route through Italy and down through Romania in the Black Sea. And then it gets to um, Constanza in Romania. And then they truck it from Romania into Moldova to Chisinau, where we open it up. And uh, you can help us. There's, there's two things, distinct things you can help us with. One is with the stuff. Go online to Target or to Walmart. Go onto the registry, the orphan's hands. And it will take up all the things that we're looking for and hoping for, for these houses. You can click on it and you pay it with your credit card and they ship it directly to us and you don't have to see it. If you want to do the way Melody does and she goes out and actually gets the stuff, that's something that I can't understand <laughs> at all. No part of my body wants to walk around uh, Walmart picking out stuff. That w that's just... Ugh. The thought of it makes me want to lie down. My feet are hot even <laughs> thinking about it. Now. But you can help do that. And if you could, we need $9,000, five containers of furniture and one container of Christmas goods. And your gift... I know someone watching me just now could support and pay for an entire container of $9,000. If 90 of you give $100, you are literally putting this, this container on the high seas over to Moldova. And you saw the girls and boys emptying that container in Moldova. You can make that happen by being part with us. If you'd like to help us, one of the great challenges of our ministry is monthly support, a dollar a day. Each of the homes we're opening will take 120 people giving $1 a day. So if 100, 120 people are watching this right now and say, I would like to be a part of this thing, I want to help by do, going to the phone, 833-324-5932. Just say, I want to sponsor one of the houses at Vatra Village and I'll give a dollar a day. This book, Every 30 Seconds, was written by Dasha Roska. She's one of the girls that we rescued from a park bench in the largest 800 kids in the orphanage. And there was, we had room in our homes for three girls and we chose Dasha. And this is the second book that she's written and it tells the story of the kids that we have rescued by God's grace. And um, every one of you that go and give a dollar a day, you're helping us with this. And those who would like to help Mel with the container, tell me again. You can call us, you make a monetary donation, and I will gladly go and do the shopping for you. <laughs> Happily, you oh, can Lord. go into the stores yourself, get the registries, whether um, in your phone, on the hand, print it on a paper, you can print it at home and take it with you. If you or, there's, or there's dad's way. Or there's dad's way. You can do Click. it in your pajamas, Yes. on the sofa. You can go to our Website, registry.philipdcameron.com. Okay, I keep, I say And all the links, you, that way you don't have to find the registry. It takes you directly to the site. So you can choose the items. We've got bedding, kitchen, living room, bathroom, just all kinds of pillows, pillowcases, mattress pads. I mean, everything is there, so. Imagine if you're a young girl that has lived a life of utter depravity hungry all the time, freezing through the winter time, clothes never warm enough to keep you warm. In an orphanage where you're told all the time you're a mistake and no one wants you, and nothing plus nothing will be, always be nothing. Imagine that girl walking into a room that you have helped make possible. Imagine her sitting on a proper bed with a proper mattress and clean, fresh smelling sheets with pajamas and clothes in a chest of drawers. Everything she's ever dreamed of in one space. And you made it happen. Yeah. Jesus said, when you did it the least of these, you have done it unto me. And you have the power. Oh, you have, I could only take you there. You have the power today, right now, to transfer the love of God from your world into theirs. 
and say to them, we will make a place for you. I believe there are folk watching that can say, I'll sponsor the entire container. I'll give the $9,000 to get all that stuff over there. You can be one of, or one of, a, of a hundred to give $90. It's the same difference. But we need these containers shipped from Montgomery. One's leaving in a couple of days. We need these containers shipped from Montgomery to Moldova starting immediately. Will you pray about being a part of that? I know God wants you to help. I know because he loves the orphan. And we're always closest to the heart of God when we're loving those that no one else does. We love you. We'll see you again. Bye-bye. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova. From providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells, to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing, they champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons. And in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their heavenly father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness. Now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds, a testimonial book of the lives changed by the orphan's hands. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to post office box 242246 Montgomery, Alabama 36124 So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833 Daily Faith. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today. If you are a pastor, church leader, or business owner and would like to have Philip Cameron come and speak to your church, conference, or event, please call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or go to pastors.philipdcameron.com or request by mail at attention Andrew Cameron, Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama 36124.